Back to Apple. We gave you the numbers a short time ago. Well, those latest earnings, record revenue, record uh, profit, beating expectations, but the company is disappointing analysts because of their guidance for the key holiday season. And we bring in tech analyst Ian Wishingrad as well as Todd Horowitz. He's the chief strategist at BubbaTrading.com to kind of unpack what was so bad about Apple's earnings. Uh, what do you make of it, Ian? What drove the stock down so much? What drove the stock down is that, like most other companies, they missed the ability to show that they could really grow. The company financials are sound in that they see that there's elasticity and they can go charge more for other products. But I think the real thing is, number one, they said they kind of lowered expectation for holiday. And number two, they're missing some of the magic they used to have. And I think this is where you feel the loss of Steve Jobs. They don't have any magical products. The most amazing thing they've come up with since his passing is a pair of headphones called AirPods. So I think unless they're able to spark some, oh my gosh, I must have these products, it's going to be just a really great company, but missing the magic. Todd, do you think a 5.2% drop in Apple stock right now in the pre-market is justified by what you heard last night? Good morning, Lauren. Yeah, I do, I do think it's justified. I mean, Apple has held up extremely well through all of the selling that has gone on. It's really only down 5 or 6% from the all-time highs. So I think, you know, when you guide lower, and I think what they're really telling you is that not only do they not have the new innovation, which is Ian is saying, but you also have the problem that they think that maybe growth may slow down. They, they may see some problems in the first quarter, and Apple notoriously under promises and over delivers on a regular basis. So, so if they under guide now, they could deliver better later. So yeah, Todd, basically, I, I think you're saying they're setting themselves up for an upside surprise at a time in when, you know, we, we have a shift in how we how we buy and how we handle our smartphones. We might pay more money, hence the average selling price near $800, but we're going to keep that phone that we paid a lot of money for longer. Does Apple understand that? Yeah, yeah, no, they understand it. Yeah, I think it. that's really... Ian, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Is that Ian? So, yeah, so, they, no, they understand that really well. I mean, they are, they know their company better than anyone else, and they are kind of more like a luxury good now. I mean, they're, like, they really have, the brand has always been a really strong place. It's just that the product offering has changed. People, they've studied this and showed that they change their phones every two years. There's kind of a cadence, so they could kind of predict it, and then you've got kind of other, other players coming in with interesting products. But as I said, I think the real interesting thing is they're way behind, you know, Tim Cook speaks about your, your data privacy, and we don't take your data, because that's totally not their business. But when you've got Amazon and Google that have incredible uh, speakers like the Alexa and the Google Chrome speaker that are able to really deliver for you. Their HomePod is just a fancy speaker without any real intelligence in it. So mm -hmm. there's some other verticals they really need to catch up on quickly to be a fair competitor but, in other verticals. Todd, we kind of thought, or I kind of assumed, and many of our guests on this show have said Apple's immune from some of the problems that a Facebook or an Amazon might face in terms of regulation, uh, regulation uh, perhaps coming down hard on them and, and privacy concerns. Is Apple still immune here, Todd? Oh, I think they're definitely immune. You know, they are more a, a, a delivery of product. And, and, of course, I think they have more intention of getting into deliver content as well. But they're not delivering the same kind of content as, as a Facebook or the others that would create those regulatory issues. I think that Apple's biggest problem and challenge will be is if the trade wars and the, and the tariffs continue to move on, which might eventually start to affect them. And, of course, as Ian says, their lack of innovation. But they are as solid as they get. And I think we've also seen that people are now buying less phones and not turning them over as yeah. fast because the phone companies are not offering them as at that same free every two years to get your back in and keep you. So I think they've got some great issues, but I think it goes back to that Apple just loves to under-promise and over-deliver. Well, they, the Dow would be up 300 points right now if it weren't for Apple. It's shaving 80 points from the Dow. Todd, Ian, have a great weekend, guys. Thank you. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Yeah.